excited to be here with Eileen and Kit. Um, we've had the pleasure of having a few conversations before the conversation here. And we have a lot to talk about in 17 minutes. <laughs> so um, I'll just, we're, we're talking about feminine leadership and um, just there's a lot of, of uh, things that we think about when we think about um, that topic. And so I wanted to just start by opening it up to both of you and ask a very open question. Just, you know, how do you lead? And Kit, I'll start with you. Okay, well, uh, Cliff Bar is led by five aspirations. Um, sustaining our people, our planet, our business, our brands, and our community. That's on the outside. On the inside in our company, we have five ingredients. We want to create, connect, inspire. We want to own it, and we want to be ourselves. So my leadership style, everyone plays to one of those strengths inside. Uh, my leadership style is to be myself. <laughs> and that's not always a good thing, but it is what it is. <laughs> uh, and part of that is uh, being an intuitive leader. And that's who I am. Um, and it's, uh, it's the way I lead the company in my way um, as co-CVO. Uh, I'm... Chief Visionary Officer. Chief Visionary I'm Officer. That. <laughs> I was telling Eileen, I just, Gary and I just made those titles up, co-Chief Visionary <laughs> Officers. After we stopped being CEOs, we were like, well, what should we be? So maybe you've heard that other places, but that's what we are at Cliff Bar. So that's how I lead. Great. Thank nice. you. Um, Great, cool. Um, uh, you're excited and I'm nervous. <laughs> always, why am I always nervous? What is that? I know, this is your third day on stage. I know, I should be totally used to this. <laughs> you guys are great, what a great group. Um, okay, how do I lead? Um, I lead by listening. And I think I'm, I started my business and I sometimes say that I didn't know how to sew. I didn't know anything about business. And so I had to listen to people, to learn. And I just adopted that idea of listening. And, you know, I'm always about gathering people and listening and trying to understand and, you know, trying to, you know, hear what people have to bring. So I guess that's sort of, there's a lot of other pieces to it, but I think it sort of starts there. Yeah, we talked a lot about just listening and spaciousness and making sure that mm. through conversation and in meetings that we have, that you lead, that you create the opportunity to have the space for people to show up and mm. share their point of view. And listening is a, is a big part of that. Yeah. The other piece that I heard from both of you is that you also, you listen, but then you listen to yourself. Yeah. So you listen to everybody else's point of view, and then you trust your gut at the end of the day to make a decision. I'd love for um, maybe Eileen, you're kind of jumping out of your chair now, um, to, to just talk a well, little bit about you touch my that passion. Piece. <laughs> <laughs> and no, it's it's about that idea of listening to myself and encouraging others to listen to themselves. And and of course, we're doing the embodiment lounge. And so it's very much about how do we learn to really listen to ourselves. And uh, so one some of the things we do, just one little example is when we have meeting, we'll usually begin with a check after our moment of silence. We'll begin with a check-in. And sometimes we'll say, what are you feeling right now? And so that's an opportunity to encourage people to check in. And like, uh-oh, I'm feeling a little tense right now. Or I'm excited, like you were saying. And, um, or sometimes share something personal, you know, which is, anyway, that's a different, a different piece. But, but that listening to ourselves is, is really huge. And, and I think the more we listen to ourselves, the more we have a different opportunity to choose. So, uh, so it's listening to others and listening to ourselves. It sort of goes together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the part of um, the leadership that I was talking about, the intuitive leadership, is a lot about listening to yourself. And it's, it's difficult to do 
it's, uh, it's not male or female, masculine or feminine. I think we're all born with intuition. It's just developing that by listening to yourself. Um, and, it, and, it, and in decision making, I think it's important to listen to others too, because that will tell you and inform you what you're feeling sometimes. Um, in, in an example, I can tell you when I did not listen to my intuition, when I did not check in with myself, um, we, we had a big ad campaign and everybody was really excited about it. And, they were, you know, they had this big deck and they brought it in and I was the final decision maker on this. Um, and I, they brought it in to me and I looked through it and they were just beaming like, come on, say yes, let's go. And I felt inside, this does not work for me. And it was, you know, it was all in the big magazines and everything. And uh, this was many years ago when I first started to be CEO co-CEO with uh, at Cliff Bar and I, I just was so insecure about trusting that gut I said oh I listened to them they seemed all excited okay well let's go with this mm. even though I felt inside yeah. we shouldn't do this mm. so that was a two million dollar mistake I own it you know it was it was not easy to own that one um, but I learned a big lesson, and that was early on in my leadership at Cliff Bar, that I need to trust myself to make a decision based on my gut and other information, but to really listen to my gut. Now, when I did listen to my, ish my intuition and, and did the intuitive leadership portion was another example of when I listened to it. Years later, more recently, we were being sued by a company. This is not a fun place to be. Um, we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know if we were going to have to go to court or if we were going to be able to settle or, you know, what. So we were in the room together at the final decision making and there was a point where everybody had stated their opinions. I had been listening as well as several other people that were basically the experts in the company on this, including our corporate counsel. And everybody said, let's just settle. We had the ability to do that as a company. You know, you pay a bunch of money, even though we didn't do anything wrong and we were not in the wrong. Uh, we didn't know if we went to court what was gonna happen. So we, we said, you know what? Um, everybody, everybody said, you know what? I think we should just settle and just move on with it. Well, there was one piece of information that happened that, that you know, stuck to me that I just didn't like. And that information was this company that was suing us was also suing all these other little companies mm -hmm. that didn't have the means to settle. So it pissed me off. <laughs> and I said, you know what? This does not feel right. They're bullies. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we should move forward on this. So I had like, you know, five guys, one woman, and me. And I was the only voice saying, this does not feel right. No, I do not want to settle. I, let's go, I don't care if we have to go to court, we'll fight this, this is, these are bullies, and I don't want them to do this to the little guys out there. So, you know, I, that was listening. That's great. You know, that was allowing, <laughs> that was allowing space. But, but it's, it's scary. I mean, I felt like I was like shaking inside, like, doesn't anybody else feel this? You know, it was like, I wanted like confirmation, you know, and all these feminine things, right? <laughs> but, um, but actually, you know, it turned out for the best and we did win that case, but, um, but it was scary. And I think part of it is listening, listening to others and then being brave with your decision, even, even though it, it kind of goes against the grain maybe. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, I well, I, actually, I, I kind of wanted to build on something. At one point, you sort of mentioned about masculine and feminine, mm -hmm. and I thought that we were talking a little yes. behind the scenes about that, and um, I was thinking about, um, you know, how I started my company, and it was a very kind of feminine uh, organization, very much about um, listening and gathering, as I was talking about before, and, and it, it, it very much built very organically and circles and and then we got to a point a few years ago where we realized that 
we needed some masculine uh, values more. We need a little more. And so it was a kind of an interesting thing for me to begin to understand that, you know, I would walk into a room and there'd be 30 people and nobody was making a decision. And I started to panic, like, <laughs> oh my God, you know, we're going to really be stuck sitting in circles here, you know, uh, so <laughs> just going around in circles. And so what, what ended up happening, and we're still in the midst of sort of a kind of a reorganization process of how do we hold on to the essence of these, you know, important feminine values and bring in the balance of the masculine. So how do we become more efficient, more focused, more decisive? And, you know, as we're playing with this, we're in the process of, I'm starting to find myself talking about structure, a word I absolutely refuse to use. <laughs> I'm talking about strategy. I'm like, people are going, who are you? And what I'm realizing is what's happening for me personally is a kind of a balancing of this sort of masculine and feminine. Yeah. And what I'm realizing is, I think, I mean, that that's in all of us, mm -hmm. you know, and that it's possible that business needs more of the kind of way that, you know, maybe women or the feminine model operates more nurturing, more, you know, uh, uh, people-oriented, more um, listening, things like that. Um, but some organizations might need more of the masculine. So I guess I think that's an interesting point. I think how much I'm realizing how internal this this kind of balancing thing is. And it's not either or. And it's definitely I mean, it's, not it's either the or. And. Right. Like you talked about how this, this isn't a, a women's issue, this is a business issue. And instead of you know, having more women lean in and being more assertive, right. how do we have men ask questions and, and be reflective and be part of the conversation as well? So mm -hmm. I love that, that both of you are, are thinking about the and, you know, yeah. that we have to be intuitive and empathetic and we have to make decisions yes. and get our strategy done. <clears throat> right, um, and it's so, whole. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that the more that we bring masculine, feminine, ma masculine you know, principles, values into feminine organizations and the more we bring mm -hmm. feminine ones into masculine organizations, the more whole mm -hmm. business will be yeah. and organizations will be. Yeah. 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 Good. So what would so a lot of us I think work and probably I'm just oh, gonna I, put it I out just there. interrupt you? Yeah. Which is like my new masculine <laughs> Oh, Sorry. I didn't That's good, that. Eileen. Good job. <laughs> no, but what I wanted to play that out because if we if organizations are more whole, then there will be more well being, I think, mm -hmm. for all. I think there, you know, the who knows, there might even be more profit. I, I don't, that's maybe not the point. Mm -hmm. But there, I think there'll be just a more holistic view of, you know, um, taking care of people, taking care of the environment, and actually realizing that our well-being and the well-being of the planet and the world uh, doesn't depend on making more profits or our GDP going up. It's, mm -hmm. it's really about how do we rebalance so that we're, we, ha mm -hmm. we have more happiness and mm -hmm. more wholeness. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm just, right. that I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> so. <laughs> so a lot of us are in organizations that I would say probably are more masculine. So we don't have as much of the, you know, Good. the listening and there's a lot more reaction, I would say. In, in organizations, and, yeah. and one of the things we talked about, which I think was great, is um, I think both of you are lifelong learners. Yeah. You, you just, you know, even, you know, coming up here, you know, I think this is, you both said, this is something that I'm still nervous about, and I love that, that you just, you do things that you continue to s know that you're gonna be stretched in. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we talked about that in the context of work, and I think a lot of women in particular think before I make a presentation or before I talk to this person, I have to have it all figured out and I have to make sure it's gonna be perfect. Right. And you both said, you know, gosh, it's just, it's so good just to, to try it out. Like, again, trust yourself enough yeah. to know what you want to say and then create more of those opportunities to have those kind of conversations. I, I would love to just have you build on well, that. Well, I think- we're both showing up here, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I think um, to riff on that a little bit is, you know, you can, I think it's okay to take time to think about things. And 
Um, one, of the, one of the things that was brought up before we got on stage here was, you know, we're, we're pushed often to make decisions immediately. And there's this weird pressure because no one's life's in danger. Um, you know, nothing's on fire. But we need to, like, make a decision immediately. And I'm not saying we want to just procrastinate on decisions, but I think it's, I think a part of this, uh, including everybody, is to, and listening to everybody, is to give some space for decision making. And that might mean, if I'm the final decision maker, I can say, uh, you know what, I, I need to, you know, go take a break. I'll be back in a half an hour and let you know what I think. Um, I need to sleep on this. Everybody can take two minutes. And I think what happens often is, especially as women, um, we're sort of branded as, you know, oh, you know, they're just floating around and they're talking about this and then they're talking about that. And it's like, it's okay to make decisions and take some time to do that. And, it, and I think, you know, unless it's an emergency, it's, it's, you know, back off a little bit and allow, maybe there's a person in the room that didn't get a chance to speak because everybody's just like drilling forward and going, okay, we gotta go. You know, and someone else is, may have the best idea of all, but they're just like, uh, 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 you know, they can't get in there. Um, by taking just a little bit of time, even in the meeting, to say, to check in and say, okay, well, what do you think? You haven't said anything. Um, that's really important. It's especially important for women who <clears throat> have been told to shut up and listen a lot. And, um, which I think is important, listening, but not to shut up, but, <laughs> you know, it, it's just taking time. Yeah. Go ahead, That's Annie. good. Um, well, I was thinking about that idea of, of kind of shutting down or, you know, uh, a lot of times you'll hear women say, oh, I work in a male-dominated environment, you know, I feel shut down or dismissed a lot, something like that. And, you know, working in a feminine environment, I probably didn't really understand that experience until more recently that I'm finding myself out in the world and yeah. in different environments where there might be, you know, 10 men to one woman or something, different CEO worlds and stuff. And so I'm understanding that experience and what I'm actually realizing is that it's me that's shutting down. You know, it's not really that they're shutting me down. It's that I am shutting down and I am being triggered. And so what I'm noticing is that this goes back, I'm going back to my passion again, embodiment. And so that when I see myself shutting down, and this can happen to men, I'm sure, too. And this happens, women can do it to men, to, to women too, or to other men, where you feel that you, you can, you can be made, made to feel, I, I guess that's not real, but you can end up feeling shut down. And the, I think the point I'm getting at here is it's our inner work, you know, to really stop and notice, you know, oh, I felt dismissed there, but now what do I do about that, you know? How, instead of blaming them. Instead of blaming them, go, maybe that's okay. Let me come back to what really, what's my purpose here? What really matters? And maybe I don't have to keep talking, or maybe there's just one important thing I want to say. So I think, I think the point I'm making is to be responsible for ourselves and our triggers and, you know, uh, uh, you know, not, let, not blame others, as okay. you were saying, not, you know, okay. so. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. So we could talk for another hour, oh, I know, um, but, I, but I need started. to wrap up. I know. Um, it's but that, I just, that's the problem with women. You know, it's like, we could just <laughs> know, talk. No. Well, we'll continue. We need about three hours. We can all and continue We'll really get it all figured out. But I just really Sorry. wanted to thank you both. Um, I just, I love uh, that you're taking your business and make it into, making it into a movement beyond food, beyond clothing, and just creating that in the world. So, Can I leave you with three things to think about? Yes. Um, know your feelings, trust your intuition, and be brave. It's mm. a great ending. Oh, Thank you. that's great.